And I believe we are live. We're back. Coming at you with another. We are back. Coming back at you with another Money Masters Twitter Space. I believe we have now been doing this for close to three months. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been a while now. But you know what they say: (laughs) time flies when you are having fun. So much fun we've been having. So no, how you doing today? Ah, it's been so good. How's your Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday's always been great whenever you're working at Money Masters. So best days at Money Masters. So uh, now, just as we always start off, just a little introduction about myself and Noah. I'm Dave here. I'm a project manager here at Money Masters, coming at you from uh, originally Toronto, Canada. Found myself over in Switzerland to get a master's in finance. Happily found a job at Money Masters and I've been working here for the past year now. And who am I with today? And this is Noah. Thank you, Dave. Yep, I work on content development here at Money Masters. And uh, primarily working on the academy. So if you haven't yet, please sure to check out the Money Masters application and then check out our academy where we have bite sized lessons talking about financial concepts. We break down all the jargon just for you to make sure that we believe everyone can get something out of it. If you've never touched finance before in your life, that's no problem. We think you're going to get something out of it. If you've been working in finance for 20 years, we think even you're going to get something out of uh, our academy. There's so much to learn and explore on the uh, Money Masters Academy, and we're working on it every single day. And we actually have some good news for you. If you are interested in learning more than just the first 16 levels, we are actually getting very close to publishing level 17. So make sure that you guys all stay tuned so that you can keep updated with this, which hopefully by next week, we will have even better news that it's published. And if you guys haven't checked out the Money Masters application, another big feature that we have besides the academy, the articles, the blogs, is the Money Masters Arena, where you can enter into daily, weekly, or monthly tournaments. I believe you can still enter into our weekly tournament right now as Monday, July 4th. Obviously, Independence Day within the United States, so the market is just opening up today. And uh, basically what the arena does is you have the opportunity to practice your investing and trading strategies all in a competitive environment for the chance to win real rewards. So if your portfolio performs within the top half of all the people that enter, you are eligible to win some vouchers from some of your favorite brands. And with that, we will now get into today's Twitter space. So obviously, we've kind of been transitioning a little bit over the past couple of weeks. We've had a lot of guest interviews, and we're going to continue having these interviews as we believe they are very insightful. However, last week, Noah actually came up with a topic that we're going to talk about the car market because we've noticed a lot of very interesting trends happening there that actually relate to economics. So with that, I will pass over to Noah to begin the Twitter space on the car market. All right. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. So we kind of thought this was a great topic to kind of go for because here at Money Masters, we want to make sure people are educated and really making the best decisions financially that they can. And right now, the car market, Dave, it's just, it's crazy, Mm -hmm. right? We all know that car prices are out of control, but we wanted to talk first to you guys about the traditional kind of metrics of why someone in the U.S. primarily is going to want to buy uh, maybe used or new, talk about why uh, the differences between the two of them, and then a little later on, we're going to break down into what is going on uh, and, and get our uh, get our heads wrapped around why you know used cars are raised up to nearly 40% over the last two years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Dave, let's start with this. Now, you got used versus new, right? Oh, and by the way, let's just get something clear. We're going to be talking about consumer cars. So I know you uh, you want that brand new Lamborghini. <laughs> However, that's not that is not part of today's discussion. So, but going back to it, we're going to be talking about you know consumer cars. So, what do you think might be one or two reasons why someone would buy a new car? Well, obviously, you just have the fact that people want something that just came off the deal from the dealership is brand new. Obviously, it comes with a lot of benefits, less mileage on the car, obviously something that you can call your own. It's never been owned by anyone else. There is that kind of phenomenon when you purchase a new car. Also, usually you get to choose the features that come in it as well. It's not just like someone else's old car that they picked out that was tailored kind of for them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of your own like uh, baby, so to speak. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely right. So, you know, just like you said, there's no secret on how the car has been treated. In fact, you probably have to do the break-in period yourself where you have to kind of get the car warmed up. Yeah, that's right. You probably get to pick your own features and, and get the uh, you know specific car you want. But financially, there's a couple other reasons. One, you're probably going to get the full warranty of the car. 
-hmm. So any problems over the lifespan, anything that happens, all, all cars in the U.S. have to have some sort of warranty. So you're going to get the full amount. And then the other thing is that because new cars usually have a bit of higher price and more collateral, you actually get better financing options at times with newer cars on average than you are with used cars. So if you know you're going the financing route, something to consider is that new cars, because a new car is, well, of course, brand new, it's got lower mileage, it's easier for a bank to actually kind of uh, get behind that for collateral, your financing is going to give you some more flexibility mm -hmm. on that. So you might actually get a lower rate. Um, by maybe one or two percent, always check with your rates to see what they are. But usually, that's going to be the factor. So those kind of make up the bulk of why people usually into the used, uh, the new car market. But so of course, we've seen a lot of dramatic changes in the used car. So Dave, back to you. Why is someone going to buy used? I think one of the easiest things is that the first thing that comes to mind for me, at least, is that it's going to be cheaper. Sure, it might be a little bit older, but at the end of the day, if it's just at a necessity that you need a car. Usually you go to that option because it's safer pricing. And sometimes you can get like cash only deals, which I know we've talked about before. You don't mm. even need to get the bank involved. If you have enough money saved up for a need, yeah. you can actually put this towards it. So that's one of the reasons why I think people would kind of go towards the used car market. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's it's on average. I mean, traditionally, it's always been that these are cheaper to buy, uh, cheaper to hold. Also, funny enough, these are the used cars are cheaper to insure. Mm, uh, new cars actually demand a little bit more on that. Now, again, that's going to depend rapidly on the type of vehicles that you get. Uh, different car markets, different types of cars have different types of insurance. But on average, usually uh, used cars will come for, um, they'll be a little cheaper to insure. Now, we talk about depreciation, right, is going to drive down pricing mm -hmm. and make used cars a little cheaper on average. So how much do you think every two to three, I'm sorry, one every one to two years, how much do you think on average cars fall in depreciation? And we're talking the whole consumer car market. So with the whole consumer car market, I remember when I was younger, there was always this fascinating thing that people used to say, like the second you drive a car off the lot, it loses like around 50% of its value. I'm not sure if that still holds true today in this current economy, but I would say probably 20 20%, I would say. Yeah, you're actually right on there. So every one to two years, most consumer cars will lose between actually on the lower end 10, on the higher end 20%, and that's including uh, excluding some other the crazier sides. Now, I want to take a guess as to what is the what segment will lose the most average depreciation and which will lose the least? Uh, I don't really know the answer to that one. So I think <laughs> it's going to be all right. About. So the hardest hit of all car uh, cars in the market are usually going to be luxury cars. These are ones that have brand new features that go out of date very quickly. The newest and best things come out very quickly. So, you know, you buy that one luxury car and then one year or two years after that, there's already something new and that usually drives down depreciation plus high maintenance costs. On the lowest end, we find that trucks, SUVs, and utility vehicles usually have the least because they don't have, they have the slowest recycle refresh rate. So that means manufacturers comes out with new versions of them slower than other types. So usually if you buy a, a two-year-old truck, it's going to be very similar to the current truck truck without any major refresh yep. have been announced. So that's the other thing. Also, one of the reasons that can cause depreciation is how often new features and refresh cycles come about. So usually what can cause it, we saw that um, uh, some reporting found that when Bluetooth was introduced, cars that did not have that feature, but of the equivalent model, lost 2% depreciation from that. And when Apple CarPlay was introduced, those cars lost 4% depreciation just on one feature. Mm. That is so, crazy. yeah, those are just so those are just some of the basics of what's going on between a used car and a new car. But of course, right now we're living in a little bit of a different world, aren't we? Yes, we are. And that's one thing that we actually want to talk about a little bit, because there is an economic side to the car market, just like how you know about everything with supply and demand. Currently, there is heavy demand for cars, whether it be in the new or used section but very little supply. And one of the big features about this is actually the semiconductors. And obviously the chips that you've heard probably about in the news a lot over the past couple of years it's because of Tesla and because of other places like that, which began to introduce them. And now with electric vehicles are becoming very prominent. When COVID-19 actually first happened, which you can refer back to some of our earlier Twitter spaces where we talked about there were supply chain shortages across the globe. Well, actually, this is one of the things that heavily impacted the car market as well because they all needed these semiconductor chips. And so because people saw that the economy was going down, people weren't driving as much, 
a lot of car manufacturers actually weren't ordering these supplies because the cars weren't necessarily in high demand. And when these cars weren't in high demand, they would put off orders for a long time and other places would kind of take these orders. So the manufacturers that car dealers and manufacturers used to go to before, such as Intel, or there's a huge one in Taiwan as well, or uh, NVIDIA, uh, the one that I was thinking about was Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co. Uh, they would actually be selling it to other places because these car manufacturers weren't actually buying them. And what ended up happening was this led to not only the new car market being severely disrupted, but also the used car market, as now cars aren't coming out as frequently, which Noah will now speak a little bit more about. Yeah, so to go off of your point, right, when all those manufacturers, they said, hey, we don't really need these chips right now, we need to reduce our supply, that also impacted that those manufacturers of the chips are saying, well, we're not going to specialize the chip manufacturing our, on our facilities for vehicles. We're going to go back over to technology. So, you know, when remember when we all go into lockdown and everyone had to get like extra monitors, all the technology for the office, yep. that's where all those chips started going and all mm -hmm. that technology and all the facilities and material went that way. So now with the, with the industry coming back, it's kind of this like pull to say, Oh my gosh, we now need to manufacture these chips all over again and get tooling back on track. So it's, it's, it's crazy. Cause you know, there was a 2 million car sale drop between 2019 and 2020. Uh, and so they really had to make some some massive cuts for that. So, yeah, you're right. The chips was the major thing. And, in fact, the demand is so great right now that if you have a comparable used car in the last two years, it's very similar to the car you can buy new today. There's such an instant demand right now for used cars that you're only going to see a, a generally a 1% difference on the used car than you would if you were to buy that car at market price. And... But of course, that no one's going to be be you know what we've seen from the market is no one's really buying at that one percent difference. In fact, it's meant that new cars, whereas used cars have had a twenty uh, about a forty percent increase in pricing, new cars are also up nearly about twenty percent. And in fact, eighty percent of car buyers in the U.S. right now um, who are buying new cars are paying over sticker price mm -hmm. um, to get into that. So there is this continual demand that whatever comes in that's brand new, people are swooping up. And uh, we know that new cars are on the lot for what, 30 days? Uh, they said that within, um, uh, so uh, I believe it was BMW that actually published something that within 36 hours of them That's receiving it. a car, it will be off the lot, which I found very crazy. And also something that you can relate to almost the entire U.S. economy. If you look at the housing market in particular, where you, we, we're seeing so many similarities between these two things. They're selling above sticker price, new houses that are currently under renovation. Just the blueprints themselves are going for much higher. And I believe yeah. there's a lot of similarities which you can take from the car market and use for the greater U.S. economy, take it almost at a macro level sort of thing. Well, just like the housing market, you know, at least within the United States, uh, cars are quite inelastic. You you know, a car is part of your household. You need it to get places. For any of our, our listeners right now, and you've lived outside the United States, and you know that public transportation, or you have like biking infrastructure mm -hmm. to get around, that makes things very easy to get to A to B if you don't want to have to deal with the hassle of owning a car. But if you don't have that ability, and you have to have a car to get to to A to B, that means that you have to be part of this market. You have to be part of the demand. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's forcing demand within the United States to remain so high. There's no alternative for people to, to shift away. Um, and so, yeah, what can you do? Yeah, there's not much that you can. And I think it's very important that we actually are mentioning inelasticity and elasticity kind of in this whole conversation. Because in Europe and places around the globe, you kind of see a car almost as an elastic good. You don't really need it if it goes above a certain price. You can mm -hmm. kind of, there's many alternatives to it. However, in the US, it's very inelastic, which you've said before, and almost, I would say, perfectly inelastic because you do need a car to get around as it is the preferred method of transportation within the United States. Yeah, it's very difficult to get around it. Mm -hmm. And. Just like that, it looks like our time is up. And next week, we actually are going to have a special guest come in, which we will announce later on in the week. And we would like to thank you guys all for listening to the Money Masters Twitter space. So from Dave and Noah, thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.